Good day everybody, welcome to today's video. Today's video we're going to focus on part 3 of the doing the timing in the 5.4 liter 3 valve engine and this video is going to deal with getting the valve covers off. I don't think the driver's one is going to be that difficult. It's passenger one, however, without disconnecting the AC line it may give us some issues. I still may remove the battery tray and that way I can loosen the AC on the side there, give it some wiggle room. We're gonna have to find out once we get there. So let's focus on the driver's side. Some people might get frustrated, but you can get that one in the rear corner by using a short socket and a little extension. ones I did by hand and then these ones here oops I can access and get them off if the socket doesn't get stuck so I hate about 12 points your daddy. Come on. Try to blow this up. The valve cover's loose. Oh, there we go. Gently. Still, I got her. She should come out. Okay, what are we sticking on? Oil dipstick tube. So here we are, the first valve covers off, and uh, I'm actually very impressed by the way it looks. Um, I was expecting it to be a whole lot worse. This chain is still pretty tight. I'm not seeing any broken guides. This VCT cell noid I'm going to pull out to have a look at the screen, like all the cam lobes are looking pretty good. Doesn't seem to be any scoring. Not bad. That's kind of a relief. Genuine Ford phaser. VCT cell noid is held in place by T27. to how that screen's gonna look in there so let's have a let's have a peeksy that's a nice pleasant surprise right there look at those screens ah uh, I was expecting it to be worse but everything's looking good been thinking quite hard about those two back bolts and I believe really my only answer is to pull the skirt out, fender skirt, so I could get at them a little bit easier. I thought about it. I figure moving the battery tray might be easier to get at the bolts for the valve cover. I am not sure if that's going to be the case or not. We're going to find out. Put the bolts right there for now. Okay, well, 
we got a got a wire connected right there. Open my eyes. Seen that earlier. Um, of course, there's one on this side too. There we go. Battery tray. What is this? What is this? Some sort of vacuum line. Let's see if I can very carefully use that pick to bust the seal. There we go. Battery tray's out. So this is going to help you guys out a lot. Is to remove the inner fender skirt. It gives you way nicer access to everything down below there. So I'm just going to pull a transmission bolt out. So that transmission dipstick can move around. I think this is only held on by those two bolts. If I loosen it enough, I wonder if they'll give me some wiggle room. It's a 7 16 All right, before I start removing the valve cover, I need to remove the VCT solenoid. I also um, took the bolts out and then pulled that up as far as I can go it gives me some more room and I should be able to wiggle it out pretty easy now I think I got a method that's gonna work good went from underneath got her out so we're gonna gently pull on it at the same time there we go threads are loose there we are, we're out. There we have it, the passenger side. VCT is out. Screens are looking really good on that one too. So that's a positive sign. This back one, where the wiring loom is, is a little ugly. It's not impossible. Oh yeah, this makes it way easier. And most of these ones up top, I just use the gun. And get them all out. Come on. Then all the ones underneath I can get. I don't have a little small power ratchet, unfortunately. So that's going to uh, add some time onto this job for sure. Let's just get all these ones loose. Having a ratchet wrench definitely makes things a little bit easier. This is the last bolt of the valve covers. Every other one is loose. Highly recommend removing the fender skirt for, for what it's worth. You'll save yourself the hassle. Let the fun begin. See if we can pull this thing out of here. Wow, it seems to be holding me in. Come on. I just gotta get it up enough. Come to daddy. I think I, I think I might have the keys to the kingdom. Come on. I know. I know, baby. Something different. I'm just pulling all the bolts out of the valve cover because those bolts are what can hang up and it's all the space I need. Okay, pulled all the bolts out. Let's try this again. I can tell you right now it's gonna be the one on the very back. Which is gonna be 
catching us all the way. I think I got it. A big AC line in the front here. She's a culprit right there, this sucker. Whew. So this turned out pretty good too. I'm not seeing any scoring. Lots of evidence that, you know, no shortage of oil, that's for sure. Uh, next step, let's do the phasers. I gotta do some vacuuming too, get rid of that dirt. Before we move on to doing the timing of the cam phasers, the other side was tight and this side definitely has some play. Well, what'd you guys think? Removing the driver's side valve cover was definitely a lot easier than removing the passenger side valve cover. I think honestly, before you remove the valve cover, if you remove the rubber grommets with all the screws in them, would greatly make it easier to pull it out, especially if you're not removing the AC hoses. If you are removing the AC hoses, then obviously you shouldn't have any trouble at all. Also with the AC line in the front, definitely made it easier removing the skirt. I highly recommend removing the fender skirt when doing it. Anyways, in the next video, we're doing the cam phaser lockouts. And be sure to watch that one. Something interesting happens. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys later.